is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Get in the Trunk, Season 4! Where we play Delta Green, where I play Delta Green with my good buddies, Troy and Sydney. And they bring their friends, Skinny Francis, uh, who I don't know too, too well, but uh, they, we just they, they seem like good here. people. Uh, we do we do play a, a science fiction horror-ish game here, modern horror, uh, if you want to call it that. We also, behind the scenes, talk a lot about tattoos ever since Sydney joined the cast. We didn't we didn't do it too much beforehand. Uh, we're not really Don't a heavily a tattooed, tattooed bunch. Yeah. <laughs> not many tattooed members yeah. of the can. Matthew's the crew. got the one sleeve. He's always right. covering up the one right. full sleeve uh, yeah. that he's worked on for several years. But other than that, not a lot of tattoos in the group pre-show Sydney was talking about uh, uh, the like cultural tattoo whatever and I'm like save it for air save it for air so educate <laughs> us Sydney on uh, what it means when you tattoo something on your hand well, versus your foot what I well f- first of all we were also talking about haircuts Joe got a great haircut and it's the time of summer where it's too <laughs> hot to have no Joe you look great Joe come on <laughs> you do, you do. Uh, I am tight I love it It's too hot to have hair. And I also recently got a haircut and I always forget when I get my haircut, you can very clearly see my head tattoo. Um, (laughs) So then everyone was like, your head tattoo. Is the the barber or whatever? The the (laughs) barber. Do you like your barber? Is your old Italian barber? (laughs) (laughs) What do you like on the side? A two? Uh, (laughs) Is your your hairstylist ever like buzzing back your hair? And it's like, oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) I always go to barbers because... Oh. I mean, like so much of my head shows, it's like the whole bottom half of my head is shaved off and I need a dude who understands that I'm like, I want a really smooth fade. Like it's got to look good and cool. Otherwise it looks terrible. Like it looks really bad. <laughs> so I go to the place below my apartment. It's a Dominican barbershop. They do not speak English and nice. I speak broken Spanish to them. And the last time I was there, all men, no women. The last time I was there, I was getting my hair cut. And some dude like busts in the door. Like people are always coming in and out and like yelling at each other, but it's very jovial and fun. This dude like busts in the door, speaking really fast, like Dominican Spanish. And he looks at me and he just goes, Scorpion! And then he. (laughs) (laughs) And everybody in the place is like, Scorpion! It's it's really funny to say. Uh, They don't speak English. I speak very little Spanish, and that's how I got the tattoo. (laughs) (laughs) I really thought it was a barber shop. I I went in for a haircut, and I came out with a tattoo. You were trying Uh, to say sick fade in Spanish, (laughs) and uh, it it came out as tattoo a scorpion on my head. (laughs) But I was saying the, the cultural thing with the tattoos is, The head tattoo is like one of the last places you get tattooed as you fill out your body. Everybody has like all these planned out, like there's special places where you get certain tattoos and like all this very uh, old school uh, American traditional style of tattooing. And I was so nervous when I went to get my head tattooed because I knew I wanted it. I liked the artist. I like, you know, made the appointment, but I didn't want him to see that I didn't have any other big pieces. So I went in the winter and wore all long sleeves, all long pants went with my friend who's covered in tattoos and I didn't say anything the whole time I was there and I was laying on the table getting it done and I didn't move at all. I like just didn't talk during the whole session and we left and like the guy was really nice and it was actually well, well, a great Hold on experience. a second. Let me get a clarification on this. So why, so this is because you don't want the tattoo artist being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. You're not ready for this. You <laughs> yes. don't know what you're doing. Yes. You're I mean, okay. A lot of times tattoo artists are like, yeah, give me your money. I don't care. You know, like I'll do whatever you want. But sometimes they can be like, oh, no, I'm not tattooing your head. No, I'm not tattooing your hands. They'll just turn you away. So Because they know like you may regret it or something or like. Yeah, it's mostly about like they're afraid you're not going to sit through it because it's quite painful. And they're afraid like their art is going to be messed up because you didn't sit through the whole time and you're mm. going to be like, I'm done. And like then it's not really their creation, which I understand. It's like if a painter had half a painting done, you were like, thank you. 
Like that's mine now. <laughs> right. But yeah. So uh, I sat through and didn't say anything and it was great. But my friend was like, you came across as so fucking badass. <laughs> you didn't talk at all. She was like, that was the hardest I've ever seen someone sit for a tattoo session. And I was like, oh. Wow. Oh, yeah, seriously. Cool. <laughs> I was going to say, you sat there without moving or saying a word while your head is getting tattooed. And then you I really paid him and I was like, like, thanks, bye. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to like, do that. Do I'd be just talking like, the whole time. I'd be like, stop tattooing my head, please. I don't know why you're doing this. Please leave me alone. Let me go. I'd be saying stuff like that the whole time. <laughs> I want to see my family again. I'd be saying yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> please, please I have money. You don't. can take everything in my wallet. <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Just <laughs> Hello, sir. I will pay you to not give me a tattoo. Thank right. you. <laughs> what about you, Francis? Just thinking. What's your uh, oh, what's your tattoo history? I have zero tattoos. <laughs> what? I am, I am I have a hundred yeah zero zero tattoos. I am a clean canvas. Uh, <laughs> I've thought about tattoos. I've thought a lot about tattoos, but I have very like I've been I've got like three or four tattoos that I I've been thinking about getting for like the past fifteen years, and I'm I'm still sitting on. <laughs> I'm just like what are these days. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to get this tattoo. I'll probably do, be like 65. Do any of you have tattoos? Uh, I have several uh, brands. Oh. <laughs> a little more hardcore. <laughs> I prefer branding. I prefer yeah. Covered in brand. <laughs> I imagine, Troy, you just have like the Boston, like the B Boston logo on like your chest, branded into your chest. Yeah, no, I, I never got any tattoos because I find that my personality is interesting enough that I don't need artificial art. <laughs> I just have a personality instead. <laughs> you, you're, saying, you're, you're, never, you're never going to prison, is what you're saying. You're yeah, never going to go to a, a Siberian yeah, I was going to get the teardrop here, but I guess they frown upon that. <laughs> yeah. You actually killed somebody. Yeah, that's a very specific. You need at least at least one prison kill before you get the death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> at least. Well, one. I I don't have any tattoos, but I did once see Dennis Rodman on 47th Street. So I think that. Counts. <laughs> you, tattoo by that, association. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you get one small tattoo. tattoo just from the encounter. I th I haven't checked since I saw him, but I'll, I'll have to like do a like for a kick. It's like yeah. Yeah. This dot is new. <laughs> it wasn't before, before I saw Rodman. <laughs> Curse you, Rodman! Get the Rodman dot. I'll never be buried in a Jewish cemetery. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my plans for not <laughs> keeping kosher all these years. Oh, <laughs> I have uh, I have a big uh, flyers logo on my right calf <laughs> from my from my uh, from my hockey days. It says Broad Street Bullies along this <laughs> Broad Street <laughs> Bullies, seventy four to seventy six. <laughs> Uh, Eric Dejardin's Dan's signature tattooed on my knee. <laughs> I heart Eric Lindros. <laughs> um, no, I don't have any tattoo. I don't think there's a tattoo on the GCP, on the original Grant? GCP, Grant? right? Grant I don't think Grant has a hummingbird somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> on his inner thigh. He doesn't. <laughs> I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Wow. <laughs> Matthew's got a Tennessee Williams quote across his chest. <laughs> <laughs> Stella! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, uh, I'm I'm going to get a tattoo tomorrow. <laughs> you should. What are you going to get, Francis? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to. I'm going to get. I'm going to go get the trunk what tattoo. Get, get, get the yeah. car yes. from the get in the trunk logo. How about a Pikachu? Oh my god! A Pikachu. That would be awesome. <laughs> I might do that. I might do that. <laughs> oh. My first tattoo. Well, uh, I am, as always, looking forward to, uh, to the sessions. Um, things, though, got really out of hand last time. Uh, well, they're in hand. I should. They're in hand. Are they? Uh, they're <laughs> just, man, man, it got intense. It was the first episode last week where we really uh, dove into combat uh, and it got 
Uh, yeah, it got, I mean, it was violent. There was a mix of shattering uh, a poor poet's mouth on a, on a fireplace mantle, putting her in the fire, pulling her back out of the fire, dousing her with milk, choking her with a rug. I mean, it was like really, really horrific. And I'm going to like delve into this a little today. Uh, oh, speaking of which, during that combat, I was so wildly excited that we had gotten into an unexpected combat that I, in, in play, getting in the zone and playing the character of Michelle Van Fitz, I I threw myself back in fear. And if you'll recall, I broke my mother-in-law's chair. Did you tell her? Oh, oh, I told her. So I cracked it. I mean, Uh, uh, you couldn't really get away with it, Sid. It was shattered (laughs) down the back. A a wood splinter that could kill a human being was like sticking out the back of it. It was like a stake that you would kill a fucking vampire with. Like, (laughs) <laughs> is it steak for vampire or is that werewolf? Yes. I never remember. Yes. So yeah, yeah, it was like a, a it was like a, a vampire killing steaks. shard of you wood kill a vampire coming off steak. the back of it. So I go downstairs uh, after the recording and I say, "I'm so sorry. I, I broke that chair that you gave me to use in the blah blah." blah. And they're like, "What chair?" And I'm like, "The <laughs> one that you gave for the 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 the." the, 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 the. And my mother in law is like, "Oh, puts dope. her hands over her mouth." Oh God, she embroidered hand embroidered the uh seat of that chair for my wife when my wife was in high school i believe this was the story my wife painted the chair it was this like project that they worked on together during a time when my wife being a teenager was very very mean to her mom and this was like one of the very few things that like brought them together and they've had that chair up in like the guest room just in the corner nobody sits in it for 20 years <laughs> and they were like you took that chair for the f- to sit and work in all week like, we have a desk chair in the other room and like and i didn't know and i shattered it and uh and it's broken wow. so my father-in-law Monty, is like I'll, I'll fix it uh I'll fix it. I mean, like I said, it was a bent shard of wood coming off the back. It looks like a real long shot to fix. But if anybody can do it, it's Monty. That's for sure. I don't understand why you didn't blame one of your children. (laughs) That's what kids are for. That's what... That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Who was I mean, playing what is my child? daughter? My daughter might be 40, 40 or 50 pounds. I don't know how, how much kids weigh. Like the damage <laughs> to that chair could not have been done by something. <laughs> something I don't know. Size. I think you have, a, have to have a little more faith in your kids. I think they <laughs> could do it if they put their minds to it. Maybe they got together yeah. and, and did it. Well, the reason it happened is because this combat got so intense. Um, As you went to look into this other entrance into the night floors, you guys found a little map that suggests that there is an entrance, two different entrances into the night floors. You found the first one through the roof access door where uh, uh, Vicky opened up the door into what looks like an old school gentleman's lounge of some kind. Uh, There was... (laughs) creepy music playing in the background and and smoke in the air and it looked like it sh- there should be people there but you didn't see anybody and then uh you you double back uh, uh you take four points of sanity damage three of which you project onto christopher which made me very sad when you did that but we're going to owe that to christopher uh at a future sesh and then um, Roger Comstone pulled you back out and then you tried to double back into Michelle Van Fitz's apartment. Maybe let's look for a different entrance into here. When Michelle Van Fitz said, no, just go through the parlor. This is my entrance and tried to close the door. Comstone single-handedly grabbed the chain and ripped it off the wall in a sh- shocking display of strength. I, I thought about it after the fact and I was like, I should have had Bobby roll on unnatural. Just witnessing <laughs> yeah. Roger Comstone <laughs> rip that <laughs> chain <laughs> off the wall. He rips I the chain off the wall, busts that. the door in. There's a there's a scuffle. A lot of uh, damage is done to Michelle Van Fitz. She gets choked out. She fumbles on her constitution roll, nearly dies. Thanks to Dr. Neal, who does CPR, brings her back. She's still unconscious for several minutes while you guys are talking. And then Roger tries to get her to come back. Splashing milk on her face. <laughs> <laughs> and says it's just so disturbing and says uh hey come on come on slapping her in the face gently where are you where are you and her response in a daze is carcosa <laughs> we're gonna pick it up from there but the first thing 
that we're going to do is, and these are my favorites. After the weekly sesh, I get a chance to listen back to the episode or watch the episode. And I realize also with the help of my good buddy, McD and friend of the show, Matt Jones, who helped me out with this things that I might've missed in the heat of the moment. And one thing I definitely missed, uh, despite all of this horribleness is, uh, sanity rolls sanity rolls for the violence that is occurring in this scene there are rules that are laid out that are rather clear for sanity rolls due to violence against innocence right quote unquote mm. innocence uh regular people uh, you, you can have all the suspicions you want that they might have something wrong with them or they might be unnatural involved or whatever but we had this kind of with Magdalena, right? Back in Magdalena's backstory, she was involved in the murder of a teenage boy who was supposedly uh, uh, possessed by a, an alien or something like that. But since it's really hard to, to prove, prove in that instant, and there was no threat from her, there was no like direct threat, what you guys experienced is direct, horrific, crippling and unconsciousing if that's a verb vi uh, violence to a perceived innocent as well as i might argue just a touch of torture as she is burned and then milk in her mouth as she's trying to breathe <laughs> i know it's all funny but it, in in real life this is a really horrifying <laughs> scene so um everybody with the exception of roger cumstone give me a sanity roll I've seen this so many times. <laughs> it's so many times. Exactly. It's a classic <laughs> technique. And the classic interrogation technique we well, used to use. Well, this is, Wednesday. of course, the one thing that'll stand out more than anything about that that should make everybody have alarm bells about Roger Comstone. It isn't just the violence that he like laid down on this woman, this writer that could, clearly could be no physical threat to you. It's it's how little it bothered him to do it. Francis, what did you roll? I got a 64 over 53. Oof. Well, it makes sense. So, you, yeah. more than anyone, go, mm. go listen back. Go watch yeah. it again. It, you, more than anyone, yeah. was like, I'm standing horrified in the hallway watching this. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? That is exactly what happens. Witnessing this is going to cause you four points of sanity as remember we're combining this all together with she she you thought she was dead for multiple seconds it was going to bring right. it back did you just murder someone a, a new york city <laughs> citizen in her apartment who was kind of a high yes. profile person and with that i'm going to move on to neil neil who had these very thoughts too skid you said this is a high profile artist like in the city and we're uh, we bursted into her apartment illegally we uh, have beaten her and we might ki have just killed her what did you roll for sanity 95 over 57 oh, oh. Gross. oh. this might be a big one for neil it is not one point of sanity damage as i roll minimum for you buddy awesome um I mean, he's a he's a doctor. He's yeah, seen at least he's seen violent injury. I've not witnessed a lot of violence. Right, uh, Sydney. What what about Vicky? What did she roll? I rolled a hundred eight over sixty two. You mean a zero zero eight? No, a ten. Eight. Eighteen. That's eighteen. 18. Oh wait, 18. it's not a hundred. Oh. I can't go over a hundred. No. no. <laughs> a scorpion going 100. into your brain? Thank God. I rolled it and I was like, that doesn't seem right, but it's not the zero zero. So what yeah. did I roll? Right. Uh, <laughs> but now I want you to think about this, Vicky. You took a yeah. gallon of milk. Yeah. And just <laughs> poured it over this woman. Your successful sanity roll still nets you one point of sanity damage for this event. And nothing for Roger. Roger, who's no different from than buying a Boston cream at seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Same vibe. Um, trying to see if I'm missing anything. I don't think I'm missing anything else at the moment. Oh, uh, projection. Both of you have the option to project this sanity loss. All three of you, really. Um, <laughs> Two of you took one. Looks like you guys are cool with sticking with the one. What about Bobby? Is he going to take four yeah. or is he going to project? No. 
I've got to project. Bobby's got to project. It's uh, yeah, it's getting dangerously close uh, to the breaking point. I'm okay. putting this on. Um, oh shoot, I gotta. I, so you I have your swear. father, who we haven't brought in yet. But, yeah, but believe yeah. me, it's cooking up here. Uh, yeah. Because what a great character from your descriptions of him and Janice. And is that it? Was it just two? Uh, Mr. Kremensky. Oh no, of Mr. course, Kremensky. Mr. Kremensky. The, the, there you go uh, so where uh, would you like yeah. to project this sanity loss Tough I'm gonna decision. go Janice I'm oh, gonna go Janice oh, I'm sorry wow. it's, it's tough but I feel like I feel like I have to cause I I need Kremensky on my side I need him and I and and uh the and colonel, you're scared of your think, father. I think you're scared, scared of the colonel. Yeah, Bobby's scared of, of, of the colonel. I don't think he can he can project that. It's got to be. Like this. I'm sorry, Jeff. Oh, know. brutal. So, what is her current <laughs> score? Her current right bond now, score because it was already we're, reduced. Yeah, we're at a seven right now. Okay, so go ahead and roll so, a d4. Oh gosh. Okay. Mm, that is. Oh gosh. What is that? Whatever the number on top is, probably. Uh, <laughs> why am I not reading this right? Or well, it might be the number on again. bottom, if they're all the same on the bottom. Okay. All right, no, there we go. Number two. Number two. Okay. So you take two points of sanity. You re- Sanity damage. You reduce yeah. your bond with Janice by two, and you take uh, two okay. points of willpower point damage. Ooh. Oh. That's rough. Vicky yeah, already that's... has three points of willpower point damage today. Um, today. Today. Yeah. And <laughs> willpower is our HP. So, yeah. So far. Oh, God. Yeah, so far. We can lose more, but yeah. yeah. It is. It's tough. Wait, I'm I'm taking that off my, my uh, willpower times five or just my willpower? Just my willpower. No, you have willpower points, yeah. uh, which are a different number. Sorry. Um, oh. It should be near oh, your hit points. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So you oh. reduce that by two, and you do have the ability to uh, to get that back. So, oh, thank God. let's return now fully to the scene. We fade in in the apartment. All of you just standing around this burnt late twenties, early thirties writer who lays on the floor, just a mess. The smell in the air is horrific. You're surrounded by books, floor to ceiling bookcases on every wall, just filled with books. You're in a space that is unnaturally large. It couldn't be the size of the apartment within the walls of this building. You know it from being in Abigail's apartment. You know it from being in Lewis Post's apartment. This apartment is double the size and it's double the size what should be out into the street. Doesn't make any sense. You see a big double door entrance that is in this impossible space. And when Vicky opened it, she saw that that was an entrance into a hallway that looked exactly like the hallway she stepped into in her dream. Now she closes the door, turns back around, and we see Roger Comstone, Neil Bachman, and Bobby Walford standing over this woman. And she says, Carcosa. Her eyes barely open when asked where she is. I'll kick it to you. So Ro- Roger's holding her uh, like up when she says that. Sure, yeah, she's holding her head. Yeah, she's like. All right, so I'll I'll lay her head down on the floor, and uh, just kind of do this motion where I'm like, everybody huddle up, and in a way that I can still keep an eye on her, but address the group yeah she's out of it her eyes are rolling back in her head she's bare she's breathing but she's like losing going in and out of consciousness in deep sleep right now um so roger's like uh all right let's address the facts here this got out of hand things like this tend to get out of hand but now it's too late there's no turning back there's some weird shit going on here and this poor young woman is now a casualty of this war. It is my estimation that there is no more information to be gleaned from her. Mistakes were made, unfortunately. I don't think there's much we can do. 
For her, at least. There's no calling the cops. There's no handing her over to the authorities. I can take care of her. I just want to make sure you're all cool with this. And he looks at Vicky. Once that's taken care of, we need to go check out this door. Wait, wait a minute. Sorry, you're talking about murdering her. You're talking about murdering this person. Talking about... <coughs> she coughs a little. Putting her out of her misery. Hold this on. Casualty. Stop talking. The first of many. What makes you think that you have the authority to make that decision? Look around you. You think we're walking out of this unscathed? Taking care of her is just step one in a long list of problems we're gonna have to deal with. You know who gave me the authority? God. <laughs> I just I made God. the joke. Right? <laughs> he always does that. He always waits until I take a sip of my water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. God. <laughs> you think I have a god complex? <laughs> I am god. <laughs> okay. I, I I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I think Messiah's right. He's he's a maniac, but he's right. Maybe he gets rid of this body. Have you lost your mind? Okay, listen to me. You don't know more than I do about what's going on here. For, so for you to say that you think that she has got nothing left to offer us is ridiculous. We have no fucking idea what is going on behind those doors. There have been no answers to any of our questions, just more and more questions. So why would we get rid of one person that we have come into contact with who could possibly give us more answers? Roger kind of gets uh, a little bit closer, advances on Vicky. And he says, well, how do you think this is going to end? You think the two of you are going to get Sunday brunch next weekend? Like old pals? It's over for her. Maybe next time. She's right. Even if... What's that? Even if she lives, we can't... We can't... Even if she lives, we can't let her go. We, she's seen too much. We just curb stomped her in her apartment. We've got to do... we got to get rid of her. There's no repairing this relationship. Okay, wait. I am not disagreeing about the poor decision-making that was made in part on all of us, all of us. What if we take her with us? What if we bring her to wherever Abigail is? I mean, Abigail is missing. Nobody's been able to find her. So if you're gonna make somebody disappear, why not use what we know has been causing people to disappear? I'm just saying, if we bring her with us, we might be able, I don't know, bypass some sort of guard, the, the other door. I don't know. Maybe she has more information that we need is all I'm saying. You just want to leave her in this strange other place you and I just saw? I saw what you saw. That might be a fate worse than death. Let me take care of this. Your hands can be clean. Wait, what are we talking about? What did you see? What have you seen? What don't we know right now? All right? You want We're to tell them this about this? We're in this fun house of an apartment building. What, what, what is going on? Why? We need to find out more about this building. We need to understand what's going on here. All Go right? ahead, Maybelline. Tell them what you saw. It looked the way it looked in the Polavoid. It, it was like, a, like out of time, like a, it smelled like mahogany. It just, it, it was like a den, like a, like a lobby. I don't even know. It had a full bar. It was like gilded gold. I've, I've never seen anything like it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why well, did, I did see something like it. I, 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 it's so stupid. I mean, I saw it in a dream, but it doesn't make any sense because well, I don't know. I don't know. You, 
You've seen this place in a dream? Not the upstairs, but the... That, that, that one. And she points to the big doors in uh, the apartment. It's a hallway. And um, I was having a dream about Abigail. And I dream about cases sometimes. You know, you work late and you fall asleep. It's a file on, on top of you on the couch. And, and I've... This one was different, though. It, it was um, it was like my dream, and it was personal stuff, and then it transformed in, into Abigail, and, and she was trying to tell me something, and I was trying to run after her, you know, but I couldn't catch up to her, and I ended up in the hallway, and now I'm realizing it's, it's the same. <laughs> it is the same exact hallway. Jesus. All of a sudden, you hear. <laughs> you hear the unmistakable sounds of a woman laughing. And it sounds like it's coming from the double doors that uh. open into that hallway. <laughs> and you just hear. <laughs> and then it seems to fade. I think it like that like breaks our like we're all intensely having this argument and then it's just like stops everything shifts to that noise uh everybody roll a an awareness alertness you mean alertness sorry 38 under 80 I got two under 20. Uh, 40, sorry. 80 over 20. 86 over uh, 50. All the action stops. And we focus in on this door. The camera moves slowly toward the door and the sound of giggling. The two of you with the higher alertness, Bobby and Roger, you guys both can hear that there's multiple voices that are mumbling and laughing and then it sounds like they are they move from the door right out front of the door and the sound starts to move away from the door and then it fades as if they were passing by <laughs> Bobby's still got his gun out he looks at Roger Messiah you heard that you heard that yeah sounded like they were walking by group a couple different voices did you guys hear that I heard laughter yeah, I, heard, I heard that listen there's a lot of different ways we can go about this we don't have to rush in there like stormtroopers agreed but I need to understand. We may not get another chance like this. What are you going to do with her? I told you I'll take care of that. I just need to know that everyone's okay with it. It is what it is. Some collateral damage. Fine. Fine. I think I think Neil is torn here because I think he's seeing his career flash in front of his eyes. What part of I think I was trying to think like what his motivations were for like involving Delta Green and everything. And I think a big part of it is that so it can inspire his creativity so it can be that much weirder and of a and more successful of a filmmaker. I don't know like what the balance is between like actually trying to defeat whatever these forces are versus like that benefit that it gives him the exposure to this stuff. But now that he's involved in a murder, potentially, it's like all of that could go away. Or just someone just a living witness to say what we've already done. So I don't know. Like Neil Neil is And also like just as a doctor, like he this is a def definite like ethical quandary too, for sure. 
Does this go against the Hippocratic Oath? I think so. I think so. Uh, Watching your friend murder this way. Let's look at it this way. Our task is to keep this quiet. If we keep her alive, she's not going to keep it quiet. Yeah, maybe uh, Messiah sees Murnau's uh, hesitancy and is like, listen, I get it. This is not the preferred option. But I don't think we have any other choice. That's what we signed up for when we joined this organization. I just, I, I, I can't be a party to this. I can't be involved in. And he's, he wants to say, I can't let you do it, but he stopped short. All right. Can I suggest we split up the, the group? Maybe let's send Neil down to City Hall. Look into the blueprints of this building. Find out whatever he can about this building. We'll take care of things here. Uh, well, Neil is like, I'm not walking away from this. <laughs> I'm not walking away from these doors. I don't think that. I don't think that we should split up. Not right now. I think we need to stick together and we have to all be on the same page about what we're looking at. What time is it? Real quick, Joe. Sorry. It's about 8.45, 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. Not much time. Okay. It's passed. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll say this conversation has passed some time. So yeah, let's let's say it's 9.30. Okay. 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 Why don't you guys uh, go look in the bedroom? I'll take care of this, and then we'll go uh, check out this party. And Neil, yeah. Neil just kind of nods and walks away. I mean, he was going to put her in recovery position. You know, he just just did CPR on her to save her life and he's just like she just starts walking away I just don't see any other solution here uh, I, I think so I, I'm, I'm just yeah. playing into that as Roger is like we can't I don't think we can expose ourselves like this is worse than like no, finding I mean, things this is the, the mission. crime scene this is this the is mission it yes. just this you know, is the mission. We, yeah but we I'm just like to. from Neil's point of view it's like you know, just m murdering. <laughs> it's awful. Well, it's very complicated from, and very, yeah. yeah. Well, horrible. From Vicky's point of view too, like the, it's horrible, but she's also like, we're fucking up the investigation part of it by killing potential suspects and people who might have information. So she's just mostly pissed that Roger was so rash into like beating the shit out of this woman and we didn't get any information from her. Like we got nothing from her. He just tackled her and her face shattered on the <laughs> mantle. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. to uh, be fair, he, that wasn't really his fault. Right. Well, I, Let's, Vicky uh, blames him she was, she was going no, after no, a no. weapon. Uh, <laughs> make was, you should be she thanking him for saving your life. <laughs> um, how about this? How about we, how about we, 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 we tie her up we stabilize her, we tie her up. We secure her in that room. And we go see what's in that hallway. And if if we need to, we, we come back to her, get whatever oh, answers man. we can. And, I don't hate uh, it. I then just then I just deal, fucking deal foresee coming back and there's just ropes <laughs> there and she's I know. gone. I know. <laughs> I know. You know she's getting out. She's, um, but she's I mean, getting out of there. I, what's I have, the other I have cuffs. I mean Vicky has cuffs. There you go. Like she carries there we go. stuff. Are they magic like cuffs? <laughs> <laughs> Do they stop magic? <laughs> they hold demons. Uh, well, that'll have to do. If we want to keep Neil on side here, we're gonna have to keep this lady alive. Yeah. Let's tie her up. Let's tie her up. Okay. Roger, do you know any um, good knots or something? Oh, I know knots. 
Uh, I'm gonna that's real well. I'm gonna cuff her hands <laughs> behind her back. Um, yeah, and maybe let, we should leave her. her. I mean, uh, Marta, you you take care of the positioning. I, I mean, I would think on her side so she doesn't throw up on herself. I don't know how it yeah, works. So. I mean, I've never had to restrain anyone from recovery position before. It's not Hold really on, ideal. Tire. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Roger hog ties her and throws her on her side. <laughs> Neil's just like covering his mouth, like watching this. He's just like shaking his head. He's ashamed okay. of himself right now for not stopping this, but like he's also just, he knows what's at stake. Like both personally and for, for professionally and for the mission. So mm-hmm. that's all he does. Right. All right. Uh, can we look in her bedroom? Could we do like a search? Cause I don't think we actually did that yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, just a general search of everything too, if we can. I'm not going to hit it. So it doesn't matter. Nope. Oh wait. Yeah. No. Uh, Oh, actually, no. I'm 37 under. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm over. Sorry. <laughs> uh, seven under 51. Oh, nice. Ah. As you guys search around, you find similar to Lewis Post, all the food in the fridge is expired and untouched. Inexplicably, her kitchen cabinets are completely devoid of uh, flatware, dishware, whatever, cups, mugs. There's just nothing. There's nothing there. Drawers are just empty or picked over. Um, There's books everywhere. This seems to be the main sort of focus for her uh, is just books everywhere. And uh, you can... As I mentioned before, in the extended part near the hearth that seems to, and near the double doors that seems to stretch out from the possible boundaries of the building, are more bookshelves. On there, Neil found a book, uh, I believe, called A History of the Russo Germanic Hegemony, 1911 to 1921. He pulled that book and I think pocketed it uh, for a later study. Um, Vicky. You, uh, looking around there, see a book that the title just kind of jumps out to you because of this this kind of situation that you're in. Uh, It's called A World Without Doors. You just see on the uh, spine of the book, A World Without Doors. It catches your attention. Uh, I'd like to pull it out and look at the back cover, flip through it. Um, Okay. You pull it out, and uh, let me see if I have this. I'm not sure if I have an image of this. Um, uh, I do. I do. Uh, go ahead to your evidence board, uh, and you can see what the, the front of this book looks like here. Let's drop it. There we go. Uh, a World Without Doors. It is a, um, a hardcover book uh, with... Uh, this imposing palace tower on the cover, but it's inverted uh, above a city. Mm. Mm. You open up the first page and you see, uh, it says it's by Emmeline E. Fitzroy. F. And you see that it is uh, published by Torbit Books and that it uh, the publication date says 1936. <laughs> Hmm. Wow. Uh, You can take more time and dig into this book, uh, but, you know, at a brief glance, this is what you see as you first open it up, but you are compelled to, like, you feel like there are answers to your mysteries in this book. I will read that later on the bus. (laughs) (laughs) That is too funny. There are several uh, of these books, one of which jumps out to you, Neil, outside of the history of the Russo-Germanic hegemony, 1911 to 1921, which you know from your education never happened. 
didn't exist. It's a history book of something that never happened. You see one, uh, a book that's called Maud Goes to the Masked Ball. <laughs> and this jumps out at you because of your knowledge, vague though it may be, of the king in yellow. King in yellow. <laughs> Only, it's super thin. Oh. So it's it really, play? really thin. Do you touch it? Uh-huh. With your hands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I think because Neil is actually on his way back to the bathroom because he's thinking like, well, I'm going to check out, see what I'm going to climb out the bathroom window. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm going to escape out the bathroom. I'm going to tie yeah, a bunch of like... bath towels together and climb out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's thinking, I'm going to check out. He's just like trying to do something uh, right. useful in this movie. I'm going to go check out her. Uh, any uh, prescriptions that she might have had in her like medicine cabinet but then he's just like oh, I left the tub right because right. of the, the cool water to treat her burns so it's probably overflowing by now mm-hmm. so there's probably like you know water like you know seeping out like under the door so and you guys didn't even like think of it it's just like running and running yeah. and nobody's noticing because your senses are so tied into this so situation yeah. here so I think he sees this book as he's going to the bathroom sees the water sees the book and okay. then he does, and then he like does reach out and like take the book off the shelf. You reach out and grab this slim hardcover, and when you turn it over, it is wide and bright and filled with light, kind of uh, pastel colors. And in large letters, it says "Maud goes to the masked ball," and you can tell it is a children's book. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Oh no! Do you the open it? Yeah, yeah. I'm I think he has a picture of the two kids without fucking eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Oh. Standing out front of the bathroom, the water running. Neil opens this book and sees a sparsely told but very brightly uh, illustrated. A book with lavish color patterns and the summary is it's about a young girl named Maud uh, who is lost in a city an unnamed city she walks into the ironworks where she meets an old man named Ambrose he fashions for her a clockwork mask that moves and smiles In the illustrations, Ambrose wears a locket uh, that, uh, well, it's just just a a golden locket with like kind of a little red ruby kind of dot in the center. That's what you see from the from the artwork. Um, Then in exchange for giving her voice to Mr. Wilde. W I L E D E or W I L D E, uh, a guy who secretly pulls the strings behind this royal city. Maud gets an invitation to the masquerade, and at the ball, she's pursued by a strange prince who's all clad in gold and wearing a white mask. And the last, I'm just, just getting chills with this shit. It's so fucking terrifying. The last page is a color plate where the prince has removed his mask, but the top half of the color plate has been ripped off, and the revealed face cannot be seen. Maud, this children's drawing is her shocked, like her face in response to what she's seeing is shocked. And then you, and that's the end of it and it says it was published in 1925 (laughs) by Finkelstein Books good lord (sighs) and (laughs) and yeah shaking and this might be even worse no sanity check needed you're fine oh yeah just kind of looks up from the book and it's just like this could actually maybe teach you something. I don't know. She work, I, walks into an ironworks and meets a man named Ambrose who fa- fashions her a clockwork mask. 
And then I assume you go into the bathroom and <laughs> yes, so I turn off the faucets. And turn off the window. Yeah. And and he like first before he does anything, he like sits on the toilet uh, and like pulls out like a cigarette like from his vest pocket, just like you could like lights out. Sits there like with his hands on his knees, like with his feet in the water, like trying to like get himself together. He takes a takes a couple of breaths, like slaps himself in the face a couple of times, and like stands up and then starts going through the medicine cabinet. Okay, you go through the medicine cabinet. It nets nothing remarkable. Uh, no, she's in her late twenties, early thirties, healthy. There are no prescription medications in there. Um, you just see kind of routine things that are in, would be in a medicine cabinet. However, as you open it, it it sticks for a bit, and then you get it open, and there's like a brown sort of. Um, like sludge but th- that word makes it seem really like viscous and there's tons of it it's not it's just enough that it makes you feel like the dampness or wetness that may have been in here or whatever has stayed so long and nothing has moved for months it looks like you're opening like the medicine cabinet of uh, an abandoned house right so it's just like it's old and like um just uh, it's con- like the water, the residual shit in there, the stuff that comes off a toothbrush, whatever, has con- congealed into like a sticky nastiness that's like all inside of it. Right. So there's no prescription meds at all? No, no prescription nothing, medications. No. Nothing with a date on it? No, nothing with a date on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you just see like toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, uh, mouthwash, you know, because it's kind of like routine toiletries. Okay. Uh, could I just do a biology check just to see if there's anything super weird about the substance or it's just like to be expected for something if it were very old i can tell with your scores you already have it is it's just like a residue of okay. of just that's been lingering for uh, an abandoned unused bathroom basically okay. for months and months and in the hot summer of new york city so that that's really all it is um let me turn to bobby for a second bobby you haven't done shit <laughs> <laughs> there's really not much to look at but for you this is a gold yeah. mine it is books everywhere and while yeah. a lot of it may be fiction that might not be your bag but anything that could point you to answers to your questions in the written word is going to be something that draws you right um mm-hmm. there's one thing that stands out to you i'll say because it is clearly not fiction uh it is a book uh called uh, Eng- it's not too large. But it's a ing- actually, yeah, it is pretty thick. It's called English to Tartesian Dictionary. <laughs> what? Tartesian. 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 That's it's a dictionary. Is this a yeah. language? Is this a Esperanto? language? Esperanto. Okay. It's a language. Perhaps you've heard <laughs> of it. Perhaps you haven't. Tatars, like Tatars, mm. the steps. T a r t e s s i a n. Tartesian. Is this a real life language? Because B- Bobby's got okay. uh, Russian, Googled Polish, it. and German. I Googled it. Do you want to know what it is, Francis? Get out of here. No, yeah. fuck no. <laughs> Shut up. We what are you talking Google. about? We don't have Google. We don't have Google. Uh, Francis, don't worry. Tartesian. I Googled it. Let me come here. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you said you study languages, right? You've studied a few yeah, languages. Well, few languages, yeah. Uh, Russian, Polish, and German, Bobby's got uh, a good mm-hmm. handle on. So. Yeah, this, and so you're this, drawn this to this be... translation book, but yeah, you've never heard of Tartesian. Okay, all right. Bobby, Unless you Bobby, have history, Bobby. do you have points in history? I do. Hold on, um, I have fifty points in history. Mm. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, wow. shit. Yeah. Roll that. So yeah, yeah. Let's roll that. Roll in history. Ooh, that's a six. Six under fifty. Whoa. Nice. Six under fifty. Six. Nice. Boom. All right, Win Sid. <laughs> but now you may yeah. Google. Can we? Uh, can we go? Can we go to you, Google? Do you want me to actually say? Sure, unless it doesn't jive with what I've got here. But go ahead. No, it, it just says that it was. Um, it's an extinct language in today's world. So who knows what it means? Wherever the hell time period we are in, but um, it's a Paleo-Hispanic 
language that's written in signs. It's like glyphs almost. Oh. Uh, it looks like clearly. runes, almost like very stick figure like runes almost. I wonder if it's an ancestor of an antecedent of a Basque or something. Maybe. Maybe. I have maybe. never Carcosa, heard of it. Carcosa. It seems Carcosa's completely Spanish. With your study of languages, you know that these symbols, this sort of Cyrillic type of language has no connection to anything European. Uh, it, 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 maybe it wasn't your area of focus, but it is kind of a strange mystery that this language, which seems to have existed up until the 6th or 7th century, does not have any roots in European type languages, right? The Romance language is what has developed out of European languages, and it appe- and it, it's believed to be extinct since that time. It's not Indo-European either? Um, n- not from what you can, at least not modern European. Okay. Because uh, sec, because like okay. Basque is like is an Iberian language that is not related to surrounding like Indo-European languages. Yes, like that's even, what I mean. Right. That's what I, that's okay. what I'm saying. Right. It is related to Iberian history, but not yeah, right. like Indo-European. Right. I don't know, even know what that means. What does Indo-European mean? Indo-European is like a proto-language group that came out of uh, like around the Caucasus Mountains, and it's like it right. links like all these languages like Sanskrit and Latin and like English, like they're all like in an Indo-European language. They're all group. descended from this yeah. sort of, okay. Yeah. But this is outside of that is what you're saying. This like Iberian. I, yeah, Basque, yeah. It, like Basque is like a pocket language. If there's a few of these like around the world that have like no relationship that they, anyone can discern to the languages that surround them. It's not descended from Indo-European and it's, it's a separate language group. So I wonder if Tartesian has any relationship to Basque. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're in the right yeah. headspace for sure. It's an extinct okay. language that is, yeah. All right. So, Bobby's a quick look grab at the outside book. of the book, and or, or the first couple of pages will tell you this book was published in 1931. That's so, this grouping of years is really creeping me out. There's something <laughs> so creepy about the years like 1911 to like 1937. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it they is. Were, but it just freaks no, me out. I mean there were huge, huge seismic shifts in the in the world. Like you know, yeah. the, you got the you got the uh, industrial revolution, like the whole world being globalized all of a mm-hmm. sudden for the first time, basically. And also, but it's I, like it's, there's something about like the pre Hayes Code popular culture that was that sort of unified sort of the movies that we see and everything. It's just like that. There was this whole shift from because if you look at some of the, like movies and stuff from like the early 1930s. They, it seems like they came from an alien world because yeah, the standards were, were not the same as they were like after the Hayes Code came out. And yeah, there's just like weird, like kind of like a very, very, a lot sexier and a lot like more uh, sort of uh, decadent or whatever. It's, uh, yeah, it's, just really, it's interesting. Yeah. I also, yeah, it's Bobby's right though about like we need more information on the building because I also, I'm so curious about the hotel napkin and like if there physically existed a building from that time period you know that has to do with all the weird stuff that we're finding i don't know yeah we at some point got to get down to city hall and find out what's going on i know (laughs) (laughs) we we need answers people (laughs) need answers um so bobby's taking that book he's gonna keep that book um and can I search through it? Search through it and see if there's any other hints or, or uh, details in there? Should I roll a search? Um, not right now. It would right now. take you... It's a, it's a very dry English to Tartesian dictionary. If you wanted okay. to dig into this for clues, for any sort of analysis, uh, you're talking... I mean, a, like a week's work. Like it's, oh, it's, you know, think about like a big case, right? Like it's, it's a shit ton of paperwork. It's very dry. It's not leading you to an answer. It is just needle in a haystack kind of stuff. And you can total, pardon me, you can totally do it, but it takes a lot of time. Um, okay. But also remember, I, I'll say it again. You're under no time constraint. There is no no part of your mission was ever, it needs to be done by Thursday, right? Like, there is no time constraint. Okay. okay. 
All right, Bobby's going to hang on to this book for examination at a later date. Can we continue on with our search through the doors? Right, so that's it. So that'll, uh, that's, I mean, I, that I've given you like an hour or two of just searching the apartment. And with your search rolls and everything, that is what you found. You found some interesting books. They seem from another era. Uh, some of them seem impossible. Like, how could a book ever be published about something in history that never happened? The Russo-Germanic hegemony, etc. And now it's time for you guys to decide, like, what your next step is. You've you've hogtied Michelle Van Fitz, who is unconscious and sort of labored breathing on the floor. I mean, what are you going to do? We've got a, a lot of questions and not enough answers. And we've got this lady that is on the verge of death that we need to deal with right now. All right? Yeah. And I know it's yeah, tough. Gotta, I don't want to like, it's not that I want to rush you. It's that, um, like you have to make a decision now. Yeah. 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 About what's next. I think I, I'm half hoping Neil is half hoping while he's in the bathroom. Like he kind of like takes his time a little bit, hoping that Comstone will just kill her while he's in there. And it, he can, somehow kind of absolve himself of any responsibility. He's hoping when he comes out that she'll just be dead. While you're in the bathroom. Beep, 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 beep. Neil, your pager goes off. Oh. Takes a look. You see your office number on it. Which is odd, because it's very late. Yeah, that's weird. Um, is there a phone in here? Mm -hmm. In the apartment? Okay. Is there one in the bedroom? The bedroom? Is there a bedroom? There is a bedroom. And yes, there is a phone in the bedroom. All right. He goes, uh, as you like walks out of the bathroom just glances into the main room where she's where she the poet is lying takes a glance and then goes makes a beeline for the bedroom tries to find the phone and he's going to call his office okay uh you go into the bedroom pick up the phone and there's no dial tone and then you hear slowly there's a static that kind of comes into the line it's like but not a dial tone okay when he picks it up and initially it hears that there's no dial tone he's just like gonna hang up and like find another phone but then he hears the static come in and he's just like and he just waits and listens see if there's any any change you just hear exit up exit up hear a voice mysterious low deep in the background and it seems to be saying exeter like the name exeter Exeter, Massachusetts. Yeah, that's like, is there a school called Exeter, I think? Exeter is College. It? Yeah. Exeter. Exeter. <clears throat> Exit here. Exit here. Exit here. Exit. Exit. What do you do? What does Neil do? Uh, he... You hear this twice. Down. He sits down on the bed, pulls out his little notebook, and he just writes down Exeter. And he just... He has a, the phone up to up held, holding it up to his ear with his shoulder and he just like he just keeps listening to see if anything else comes through and then the static completely goes away and a dial tone comes in it goes okay. 
whatever I have. Okay, yeah, I remember what a dot toast sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> he, like he, he, he like lets the phone drop to the floor as he's like looking at the word extra in his notebook for a second, and then he like looks up, like snaps it shut, puts the notebook away, and dials his office. Boom! 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 boom. Rings through. Brrr, brrr. Click. Hello? And you recognize Noah's voice. Hello, Noah? Where are you? Where have you been? Uh, I'm out. I'm out with some friends. Uh, we're at the Cafe Normandine. What's what's happening? Uh, there's messages piling up here, and I, I, I just want to know if I can get out of here. I, I thought you'd be back by now. What, can I leave? Can I go home? Yeah, uh, sorry, you don't have to stick around, but what, what, who's been calling? Uh, Fran called, and so-and-so called, and, uh, and he's, like, listing off, like, you know, business relationships you okay. have, uh, jobs you're working on, but he does say Fran called. Okay, could you, what did Fran say? Did you leave a number where I can reach her? She said that she had to leave town, she said sorry she couldn't make coffee, she was doing something for work. But then no she'll number. be back Saturday, is what she okay. said. Perfect. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. Go ahead and go home. Okay. Uh, thanks. Okay. See you Bye. tomorrow. Uh, maybe. Bye. Hangs up. <laughs> and then we just see Noah looking at the phone, and he's just like, <laughs> "What the <laughs> fuck?" And hangs up. This job sucks. Yeah, Noah's job, job sucks. sucks. What a shitty Hello, aloof no boss. Noah. <laughs> <laughs> Next campaign, Noah's the star. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, we got to get more Noah. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. Uh, he asks for right. sanity checks every day. <laughs> <laughs> what is next? We have to go through the doors. I mean, is that the plan? We're all going to go through, right? It, that's the plan, but we have to figure out what to do with the, with the Christy. Right now she's hog tied and on her side. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> Michelle. I we can don't. see you're very emotionally invested no, in her. She's like a Christy. We Christy Michelle. Care. Curb stomp milk lady. Sorry, Michelle <laughs> milk lady. <laughs> Person who we just violated. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, this victim. Victim! Of a crime! Victim of our home invasion. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, All right. uh, Vicky, let's go. Are you the boss here or what? Clearly, I'm not the boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, as she walks back into the room, we need to continue on. And Agent Messiah, if you want to take care of it, um, I suggest you do it because we're going to have to make our way through those doors and we're going to have to map stuff out. And, and um, I, yeah. Well, I mean... Our options are we leave her and she either dies on her own or uh, escapes. Some other shenanigans take place that free her from my hog tying. My only thought was we explore and come back. And that you way know we can come back. I plan on it. I mean, I sure hope that we can come back. I don't know. I don't know. When I woke up this morning, I didn't plan on ripping a chain lock from the outside, tackling a poet, <laughs> dousing her in milk. So yeah, I plan on coming out too. But we'll see what happens. He's right, we've gotta be sure. As for Christy, I think Shall. she's going to have to be dealt with one way or another. Okay. Okay, I'm not helping. I'm not watching. I'm... Okay. All right. 
meet me in the bedroom. And once they clear the room, Roger kneels down over her and uh, flips her over and uh, looks at her in the face. And uh, he like cradles her head in his hands. And for a minute, he like sees that girl on the plane with her face covered in blood walking towards him. And he like shakes out of that. And then uh, he sees uh, Dr. Lyra Westover's face in his hands and he shakes out of that. And then he sees uh, Norma from the future and he kind of shakes out of that and he just (coughs) snaps her neck. And as he snaps her neck, we see a flash uh, on the screen of the yellow sign that you saw on that paper that you crumpled up and threw down. It is, it burns into your eyes for a second. And after that snap, the residual effects of that burn, almost as if it was shined on you with a bright light. You see that sign in a haze in front of you for a moment, that symbol. He shakes it off, blinks his eyes, takes his glasses off, rubs his eyes. Then he goes to the fireplace and like pulls out anything, uses uh, the spikes and whatnot to pull out anything that would stand in the way uh, of him getting a body in there. And then he shoves her body in the fire. <laughs> oh, <laughs> put her body in the fire. Oh my god! <laughs> it's gonna take forever. <laughs> forever. To burn. And he just puts it. Puts it in there. <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor like lighter fluid on I don't know <laughs> <laughs> throws it in there oh god why do you have to make my job so brutally difficult like <laughs> tell like, me how long it's gonna take until yeah. she's done <laughs> like, google how long it takes got to some time. At least we burn got some a human literature. body in a fireplace we could, we could sit by the even fire when, and read even when you <laughs> cremate animals or humans there's bone fragments left like it takes forever to burn a body and at such high temperatures. <laughs> it's fine. What are the other it's, options? It's fine. You already put her in the fire. The amount yeah. of other options are so staggering. There's so many. I don't even have time to list all of the <laughs> other did. more reasonable <laughs> options. Uh, he, he, made the her into a fireplace. <laughs> he did. He, he made the choice. Out. I'm not pulling he her out did. of the fireplace. Yeah. Her husk yeah. is slowly bubbling. <laughs> oh, God. It smells and horrible. Just, it the smells smell. so horrific uh, yeah. in the apartment. Uh, wh- what do you do? I guess. What do you guys do? Are you gonna I like? Leave. Uh, I'm Bobby leaving. opens a window. Bobby opens a window. <laughs> comes no. back. It's like Close don't worry window. about that smell. I took care of it. Vicky <laughs> closes the window. <laughs> oh wait, that's a good point. If Bobby opens a window, can he open the window? Can I open the window? Well, what window? There's no window in here. There's no. Window. Where are you? Bedroom? Bedroom? Sure, you can open the window in the bedroom. Oh, okay. Okay. And Vicky puts her arm out the window. She's just having a weird moment. Yeah, as you as your hand passes through uh, to the other side, it is shaved off at the bone, and you're just like, ah! and you pull it back in, and it's just like a stump. Uh, no, it's just you cut it out, and it's just it's, it's outside. Could you imagine we're in some like horror house apartment, and everyone's just dying, just every room. Uh, oh god. Okay. Yeah, I want to leave. It smells horrible in here and Vicky does not want to watch a body burn for five hours so uh, she makes a move towards the double doors and just stands like waiting okay I think if it's okay before while we're all standing in the bedroom together I think Neil especially like makes eye, eye contact has a moment with Vicky doesn't say anything but just like how just seeing like in her face if she feels the same shame that he feels at this path that they've taken and just this sort of resignation now that like it's done and we're in this together and he offers her a cigarette yeah without saying anything she like first can't make eye contact 
with Neil. Like, you know, looks away, looks back, like nervously. And when you offer her the cigarette, she kind of knowingly, like, nods and takes one and just kind of like holds it up and, and lights it and starts smoking. And then, and then he offers one to Bobby too. Bobby gives him a nod, takes one of the cigarettes. Thank you. And I just think, just the three of them standing there, silent in this moment, like a low angle shot of just like we're we're across the Rubicon now. Mm-hmm. You know. And Roger comes in, sweaty, like really sweaty. And he's also smoking. <laughs> Let's go to this party. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you all move out. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep roll over your sanity, you know, whatever for seeing her burning in the fire. Like I'm not going to add more to it. It's horrific, but uh, I'm just going to keep that where it is for now. You go over to the door. Tell me who, what the order is and what's happening. How you're proceeding. All right. <clears throat> Vicky's Bobby's towards the front. Out. Okay. Is she towards the front or in the front? Unless Comstone like steps in front of her, she is at the front because also she peered down this hallway. Opening the door. Yeah. Yeah, Comstone will be right next to her. Okay. Right behind. Right. He'll be right next. Uh, Bobby will be picking up the, flat, the flank with his gun out just in case. Okay, Neil is going to pop open his Polaroid camera. Have it at the ready. Okay. So she, she slowly opens up. Click. The double door. And you look in and you see a hallway. The same hallway from your dream, it seems. It's very similar. It stretches out in either direction for a long distance with just doors on either side. Uh, Vicky doesn't take out her gun, just in case somebody sees them. It, I, she doesn't want people to know she has a gun, but she kind of like taps it at her hip, looks at Roger, points. Now she's in full cop mode. She's like, this is an investigation, like trying to clear her head, points to either doors and points straight and looks at Roger to see what, you know, they think they should do. Keep going straight, check the doors. Uh, let me do an awareness roll here to see if I sense anything. Uh, ooh, 79 under 80. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, that's I really got you good. saying awareness. Um, uh, did alert, I say fucking alert, alertness, alert. yeah. Yeah, 79 under 80. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay. With that roll to the right, the it goes to the right and to the left. That's it. You're looking at a T intersection. The door oh, is open oh, and there's just a I wall see. across from you. Right. There's the right and there's the left. Roger, you feel that you hear far, far to the distance seems like ricocheting from the right. The faint barking of a dog. I feel like you hear a it's the dog. It's the fucking dog. Roger looks at Vicky and points to the right. And then he puts his hand up to say, I'll go in first. <coughs> Roger looks back at Makeshift and Murnau, pass them to the crackling fire in the living room where Christy sits. But now she's crispy. <laughs> God. God, her her name is Michelle. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep saying Chris. Um, and then he steps through. He steps through. Do the rest of you step through? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. All of you step through and sh- click. <gasps> The door closes behind you. You look 
behind you, Vicky, all the way down the hallway. You don't see anything but doors and doors and doors, and it seems to end far away in a T intersection. Roger, you look forward, and you begin walking. Yeah. You start walking down this hallway, and it just seems like a long hotel or apartment hallway. You pass a door on your right. Listen to that door. You hear nothing. Okay. You pass another door on your left. Then a little ways down the hallway, you hear, click, a door opens, and and it's, it's maybe, maybe, I mean, it's far, it's far. I'm trying to, like, Delta Green likes to do meters, so it, it might be 30 meters away from you, so far, that far away. That means nothing to me. Uh, How many feet is that? It's like 90 (laughs) feet. It's like 90 feet away. So it's like really far away. You see this, you hear a door open and you see a figure step out from the door. This figure is clad in what looks like black formal wear and seems to be holding a suitcase or a briefcase at their side. When the door when it the door opens and this figure steps into the hallway, you hear immediately the residual sounds of a party drifting down toward you. This is so shining. It turns away from you and begins slowly walking away. What do you do? I kind of want to call out to this dude. This reminds me of Vicky's dream. Mm. Mm. Didn't that guy oh, have a briefcase? But before we continue with the Roger mm-hmm. stuff, did anybody try the door after it closed? Yeah. I imagine somebody That's must have thinking. turned around to just like try it. Go back there and try that fucking door. I mean, <laughs> I just right, want to say, we didn't sure walk like, I, I want to say we retconned, we didn't walk all the way down without trying the door after it slammed behind us. Did it open, Joe, or no? What do you mean, did it open? Tell me what you do, Zicky. <laughs> just tell me what you okay. do. <laughs> did, I, she tried the door after it closed. She just checked. Did to you make... say that or you're saying that now? She's trying the door. I'm yes. saying I didn't miss you saying that, right? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I just didn't have a chance. All right. So if you're going to try the door, you have to roll a sanity check. All right. For, oh, it. No, forget it. She didn't try <laughs> it. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean she didn't try it? <laughs> you just said she tried it. You got to roll a sanity we check. Know. We don't want to know. Wow. Uh, oh, no. No. Oh, God. No. No. 97. Left the oh. door. You should have left the door. You should have left the door. 97 <laughs> over 61. Maybelline, get back here. <laughs> you take one point of sanity damage. You open the door, click, and you look directly into Van Fitz's apartment, and you can smell wafting out the burning fucking corpse inside. (laughs) Okay. Okay, good. We can get out. Okay. Just check it. Yeah, she closes the door, but she's, yeah, her, her sensory, like, understanding is just so fucked up and that's the sand law. She's not just like, ah, but it's just, she's so confused. Okay, continue on. Sorry, Roger. I would like you to mark that sanity loss, okay? Mm-hmm. In a separate column. Mm, okay. So just write a minus one. Do I keep my current at 61 or do I lower mm-hmm. it? You to keep 60? your current. Okay. It's two different sanity charts. All right. Um, Roger looks back at the rest of them. Do, do I see? Does it seem like they all see this guy? All my um, allies yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, they all see him. Yeah, see him. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Roger says, "Hey, pardon me." Turns, walks away from you, just a few steps. Turns to his left click opens a door and you hear more sounds of like celebration party walks into a door to the left and disappears 
Jeepers <laughs> crow. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Bobby Cox is gun. <laughs> All right. All right, you know what? Let's go to the nearest door and see what's on one of these doors where we don't hear anything. Because maybe we can just get some information and then come back with a fucking bazooka. I don't know. Uh, but, like, we need to see what is going on in these rooms. Okay. Let's go to the... Yeah. The nearest door that we just passed. I guess it would be the second door. <clears throat> Still, we don't hear anything. The second door from where you walked in from Van Fitz's apartment, you hear nothing. And I'm giving you, you know, you have that high uh, alertness, so I'm giving that to you. All right, so I'm going to uh, give everybody a look and then open the door slowly. The door's locked. Fuck. <laughs> Go back to the first door same thing you reach down click the door is unlocked I was not expecting that (laughs) 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 great produce a can of WD-40 that door needs some work you open this door and you look in and it looks like a hotel room or a, 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 an apartment, small studio size, but it looks like it's from another era. <laughs> you see a bed, you see an old school lamp on a desk table, and you see a couple large books stacked. These are pretty large. Unlike the ones you were pulling off Van Fitz's shelf, they have the look of like uh, like major histories or something, right? Like like huge tomes. There's a couple big books with plain sort of leather bounding uh, binding that are uh, on this stacked like crisscrossing on this uh, desk. Uh, you hear you smell the faint smell of cigar smoke. And maybe just like a hint of liquor on the air. This is what you see from the doorway. Roger's like, I know you're uh, upset about Christy. But what if they knew what they were doing and they chose to come in here? Now, I'm not saying she deserved to die. But maybe we shouldn't mourn her too hard. I want to mourn hard. <laughs> Let me mourn hard. <laughs> Wait, you Desire, don't tell are you me saying... how to grieve. <laughs> you don't tell me how hard to mourn. <laughs> Search this room. I have bad eyes. Uh, I mean, yeah, Search. can we... I'll search you room. guys walk into this room. You all go into this room. Roger pushes yeah. Vicky oh, yeah. in. Oh. Go. <laughs> Shut the door. Shut the door. Hey, door. open up the door. <laughs> Excuse me. Why I never? Um, no. Uh, yeah, I think Vicky steps into the room after Roger steps in first, which he totally does, and she'll search it. Too. Roger and Vicky in the room. Bobby and Neil not in the room. Neil is going to stand oh. at the doorway oh. and take a picture of the inside of the room. Let's pull it okay. Right. Bobby, what are you doing? Yeah. Bobby is hanging back as well with this gun out, watching the flank, watching them in the room. Okay. Vicky, you go in and go to these books. These big books. There's the only thing of interest that you see from w- walking in. The bed is made. There's no person in the room that you can see. You can see it's slightly ajar door to a bathroom. There's seems unoccupied. I don't like the way you're saying that. <laughs> Why do you keep bringing that up? I mean, waiting for that photo to develop and there's yeah. some weird orbs <laughs> in the room. <laughs> yeah, we're not alone. You grab this book, uh, one, and you open it up. It. What's the title? It has no title. It's blank. Uh, yes. Or you don't open it up. It's up to you. 
Uh, no, I mean, I think she opens it up. You open it up, and it is, the type is so small, and it is filled with uh, tables. Tables upon tables upon tables of numbers, of data, with all this kind of intersecting data. And uh, uh, lots of, like, uh, analysis, written paragraphs, and piecing this together within a few seconds of just, like, flipping through a few pages. You understand that you are, because you're good at analyzing this kind of stuff, you understand that you are looking at actuarial tables. They're huh. tables that describe, with like an X and a Y axis, uh, certain ages and likelihoods to die, parental diseases and ages associated with descendants and likelihood and percentage of death or average lifespan, etc. You keep going and it seems that these are like ways to calculate the likelihood of how long you would live. But like in an old school way. Huh. Before computers might do all this now, right? For people. Does it have, is it all like constants or does it have variables that are like, if you drink, you know, then it yes. like reduces. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So it's got it all these like different. It says like alcohol consumption and it has like one drink a week, huh. five drinks a week, 30 drinks a week. And then it has like associated things. And then it'll say like C fig five, four. And like <laughs> you'll go to another page and it'll like cross reference that with family history of alcoholism or, you know what I mean? Like it's all so it feels actuarial like a data. Does it feel like a textbook? Um, not a textbook. It feels like a reference book. Okay. Like a textbook, is, I, I consider to be more for <laughs> educational purposes. This seems to be more like a reference book for someone that is using this data to make decisions, right? Weird. Am I okay. explaining that difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. It's not like academic in the sense that it's written for informational. It's like academic in the sense that somebody is doing some sort of experiment or something using that. Maybe, yeah. Weird. Okay. She shows yeah, Cumstone. Uh, so you see uh, this. Uh, you're showing Cumstone. Uh, Cumstone, you, you can kind of, uh, yeah. Talk about it later. Um, in that instant, Bobby, did you say specifically that you were watching the flank? That you were yes. watching... You said that specifically. Yes, yes I did. I heard the word flank. Oh God. I oh heard God. the word I'm flank too. Flank. Yeah. I'm watching the flank. I didn't know if he was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat a flank steak later, or if he was talking about <laughs> watching the flank. Not even that, flank steak. Somebody left their flank steak today. outside of this room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you you're examining the flank. Your flank at this point is a very, very long hallway that ends is seemingly in a T intersection. Oh God. Suddenly, without warning, we cut to Bobby looking down this hallway and you see two men run shoo, across the hallway, oh. all the way in the distance. It's very hard to see clearly, but they seem to be oh in, God. they seem to be in suits. Bow, 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 bow. And they're like, <laughs> and they go like this, shoo, 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 and they run past. A split second later, well, let's say one second later, one to two seconds later, you see three men run past that same hallway. And the three men running behind are seem to be, from your perspective, wearing these really large gas masks. Oh, and oh, they're shit. holding firearms. And you see them do, 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 do run past what do you do oh my god holy shit uh we have we have it we have uh we have we have hostiles we have hostiles I he says he says the team we have hostiles and you hear <laughs> bang, bang 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 you hear the unmistakable sounds of gunfire coming from all the way down the hallway all right roger just instinctively goes out and stands uh in front of bobby and says, what did you see? Where did they go? Where did they go? Three guys in masks 
looked like they had weapons, ran down the hall at the end of the hall to the right there. All right, so they ran where we came from? No, so past far, where no. you walked in, all the way in the distance is another T intersection, is a T intersection. They oh, came so further. from left, from your right to your left. They crossed the hallway as if they were running down that other hallway, and you just saw them as they passed by this one. Two ran by in suits, and then three right. ran by with firearms in gas masks, and then uh, you said, we've got hostiles, and then you just heard, bang, 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 coming from down the hallway. Uh, Right. All right, Roger's like doing the math in his head. It sounds like three were chasing two, but either way, yeah. uh, it's not necessarily that we're outnumbered, but we got to get out of here. Yeah, uh, something's when, happening. Yeah. When Vicky hears it too, she slams the book shut, pulls her gun out of her holster, and puts her back against the wall and peeks out the door, also listening in on Roger asking Bobby what's going on. Uh, let's go back to Christie's. Uh, Vicky puts her back to the group as we walk in the direction and faces down the hallway, uh, gun out, ready in case anybody has like somehow come around or like anything. Uh, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're all we're all back to back, basically. Right, so you're all back to back. And Roger, what are what are you doing? I'm sorry, I'm going to be like super yeah. irritating with this. I need very specific intentions from everybody at every moment. I want to so. stealth back to the door that we came into this place in. The door that would that Vicky just went to that Maybelline just went to check to make sure okay. we could get back. So you were very close to that door. You start walking back. You said your gun is out. Oh, that's right because it's the first. We went to the first door. Yeah. So All I right. go that way. Gun out. Do you you want go me to that roll way. Stealth? Gun out. Roll a sanity check. Sanity. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Fail. Oh man. Oh, terrible. Yeah, Eighty-two over sixty-three. God. Two points of sanity damage, side chart, minus two. Okay. You come up and you see the the uh, double door that you just came in. What is your intention? Go back in the apartment. You open up the door, lead the others, and you can go back into the apartment. Shut the door. <laughs> Everybody's back inside? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You all come back inside and uh, immediately, oh God, you're overwhelmed by the stench, obviously. And uh, Roger, you um, transfer that sanity damage over. So you take two points of sanity damage and you can erase that separate chart. Oh. oh, okay. Mm. And I take Ooh. the one. And you take the one and you can erase that chart. And both of you feel uh, like as if you lost that sanity damage when you walked into Van Fitz's apartment. So like it 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 manifests now. So how it does didn't... that manifest for Roger? And, I... uh, and do you want to project oh. it? You have that option. I'm not going to project Easy. it, but uh, I'm going to storm into where the body is. How does it look? It's gross. I mean, I can't even begin to describe how disgusting and horrifying it is. It's cooking, though, very slowly. <laughs> um, I just grab the poker and just kind of shove in any parts that are <laughs> that are yeah, f- yeah. And like f- falls <laughs> in and throw up. He's like, what did you do? He's mad. He's just stoking it. He's like, stay in there. You don't want to see this. Uh, How does this manifest for Vicky? Vicky only lost one, but I think it's, again, like, it's almost like vertigo. Like, it's a really weird feeling to not understand the dimensions of your surrounding. Like, uh, she feels like a cat whose whiskers were cut off, you know? And cats use their whiskers to determine sizes of doorways and, like, distance from objects. And she's just, like, she gets, like, a pounding headache being back in the room. She doesn't know if it's the fumes of this burning human corpse. She doesn't know if it's because what's the last time she ate or drank any water, all this like expired food. She just feels like she is gonna, she has the spins and she's gonna throw up. And I think she goes to the bathroom and maybe tries to make herself throw up. Okay. So pull the trigger. Yeah, we see Vicky run into the bathroom. 
uh, and we hear horrible sounds of gagging and vomiting. Bobby, wh- what are you thinking right uh, now? Uh, watching uh, Messiah's and Maybelline's reaction and wondering what the hell's going on because we're not having that effect or, or, or response, right? We just walk in like there was no problem, but they're having. Well, Some no, kind of you've already rolled on the sanity from just being like seeing oh, the unnaturalness okay. of these floors that has already okay. passed. Uh, okay. You didn't experience uh, any direct sanity loss in there, uh, mechanically uh, okay. speaking, but outside of mechanics, you can act however you want, you know. So uh, um, yeah. I'm just curious what what do you want to do right now, Bobby? Yeah, <laughs> Bobby wants answers. Bobby wants to know what the hell's going on in this building. And uh these answers aren't coming from uh, the, the, this the situation. He wants to go down to City Hall. He wants to find out what's going on in this, in this building. He wants to look into the, the 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 plans of this building, find out what the weird stuff is that's creating this this effect, this this craziness. Because there's got to be answers. Great. So Bobby's gonna Bobby's gonna Bobby's. I guess he should bring this to the to the group like we need to know we need to know what the hell's going on here I think it's time to go to City Hall it's time to go to City Hall <laughs> damn it I need answers damn it you are pushing this all day I need answers uh, cause the, yeah we, we don't have any leads she's dead Christy's dead Crispy's crispy Michelle <laughs> we need answers <laughs> oh Christy <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, also, did Bobby tell us, like, specifically about the masks? Like, did he get a good view of the masks? No, it was very far away. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, it, was, yeah. it was like a really long just, hallway. He just saw the figures running by. Never mind. With the firearms. The firearms. Um, yeah. I need answers, guys. We need answers. Okay. Um... So what does that mean? Does that mean you're all going home? I think, I think, uh, are you leaving I, this body here? To, I think I have to, to stay here. Yeah. And to, I think to also wait until the bodies make sure that body yeah. cooks. Vicky <laughs> doesn't sure cook. want to go home right now. Like she is pretty freaked out. And the last thing she wants to do is be alone in her apartment. So I think it's one of those like she's lingering like everyone's kind of like we got to make a plan yeah tomorrow we'll do this and then oh it's it's nine thirty right it's like nighttime right yeah and we and, just and the clock night okay why don't we just lock the doors both sets spend the night here and read <laughs> these books I'll tend to our mistake and then we'll. Get some breakfast in the morning. And then I'll head to City Hall. And then makeshift will head to City Hall. While this, right. while they're sleeping. having this discussion, Neil is going to go into the kitchen and he's going to pull out uh, all the cleaning and all the solvents and everything that he can find. He's going to go through the kitchen drawers, and find all the, like if there's a cleaver, like kitchen knives, like anything sharp. Any, any tools he can find, he's going to pull them out, like array them, like in the kitchen. He's going to come back out, pull the body out of the fireplace, uh, put, the, put a rug over it, like douse it like any open flames on it. And he's going to get to work. He's going to use his knowledge of surgery and forensics to dismember this body and dispose of it in a way. He pulls out kitchen bags, like everything. He's going to dispose of it in a way that will cover our tracks most effectively. Uh, okay. Welcome, Myrna, welcome Myrna, to the team, what, there, Myrna. <laughs> what, what's going on? There are. I will say this: there are no knives in the place, but you do know, I believe, that Roger carries a combat knife. All right. Uh, you could ask for it. It says there are uh, no knives at all. No, there's no silverware. Oh, there's, there's no, no silverware. tape right, plates. Right. There's yeah. no mugs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is residual cleaning supplies, though solvents and uh, you know, yeah, okay. stuff like there's bleach. All right, it gets some um, puts on. Does does she have uh, like dishwashing gloves, like rubber gloves? Uh, yeah, I think you could find those under okay. under the sink. I'd put yeah. those on. 
and uh, maybe if some rubber bands or something's going to tie off the ends of them and uh, he's going to say the messiah if you uh, do you lend me your implement there like points at his knife pulls it out flips it around in his hand be careful now and he takes it it's just like you all can go I'll take care of this Oh, the turnaround on Neil is fucking amazing, Skin. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> All right, Bachman. <laughs> sure you want to be to sack here up. alone? I don't mind staying. It's all right. I also want my knife back when you're done. You'll get the knife back. I'll even sharpen it for you. Um, I'm, I'm going to stay the night. Um, I just want to see what happens, you know, during the rest of the night. I'm curious. Um, I also don't particularly want to take the bus back alone right now. So if that's all right with everybody, I'm going to go make up the, uh, couch. What's to say that if we can go that way, they can't come this way. They were just three right. guys with guns. It's probably best if we stick together. Do those doors open into the apartment or out into the outer hallway? They open into the apartment. So we can block it with like the couch or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Barricade. We'll, we'll sleep in shifts. We'll sleep in shifts. Somebody's going to be on guard throughout the night. Neil and I'll take first shift. You and uh, Maybelline go. Go rest. Neil's got some work to do, and uh, all right, uh, Murnau's got work to do. Whatever, if you need some help, let me know. I apologize for the noise, and he's gonna, he pulls the body like he puts rolls it onto some uh, like some plastic trash bags, and like sort of pulls it along the hallway into the bathroom and shuts the door. <laughs> okay, just want to clarify some real life things here. He's dismembering a body in the bathroom. <laughs> the smell of a burning corpse is in all of the sheets and every like you can't escape it. It's going to be in your clothes if you sleep here all night. You, you don't have a change of clothes. I don't know if anybody has, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I'm assuming you're not traveling with travel bags or anything like that. Um, so is, is just be aware room? of the realism of just crashing in this horrible murder scene uh you'll wake up with the clothes you have on and that's it and you know what i mean so like i don't know if anybody is like does anybody have contact lenses you know what i mean like little things like that think about the details of just crashing somewhere else and make sure that you're good to go on that before we move forward the water is still on in the building right like i know the electricity was off was it? Uh, it should well, be. It says it was off and all the electricity is working. At night. At night. Um, yeah. I'm just thinking about the morning. Like, perhaps. perhaps I'm thinking we, we, we stop by the. We, we each stop by home before. At in the morning after we've cleaned everything up, after we've disposed of the body, we know that it's a secure space. Then we can go home, go to our respective homes, change, shower, get our. I think our at the light of together. day. Like 6 a.m., 5 a.m., Vicky's gonna leave this apartment. She's just staying yeah. through the night to see and try to get some sleep, and then she's gonna Makes go sense. home. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah, as opposed yeah. to like bunking down, you guys are just holing up for the yeah. night. So the in electricity this place. goes out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then we know it's safe. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Murnau is working 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 uh in the bathroom and you keep and hearing like these snapping sounds and he's using uh, something heavy uh, to like break the bones yeah so like, uh, uh, uh i'll need everybody uh, to roll sanity checks except uh <sighs> roger i don't know how do you feel about it skid uh have you ever dismembered a body before uh it might be sure. something you've done I mean, before in a non-criminal yeah, way I mean, in like medical school for sure like i've right. cut through like a bunch of yeah, so maybe you've already cadavers. taken your sanity loss for the violence uh, earlier, and uh, but the rest of you, knowing now that a body is being dismembered right through that wall, need to roll sanity checks. 
Yeah, I got a 91. 91 oh, over yeah. half. Oh, you're so <laughs> bad at these <laughs> rolls. You I'm guys are failing every roll. roll. Every single my roll. Sanity it's insane. Is, is, ah, my sanity is slipping quickly. <clears throat> um, Vicky got a 16 under 60. And I think, yeah, I mean, she's, she has killed people. I mean, Vicky has killed people before in the line of duty, like has shot people. People have been injured, but this is still very innocent people. No, I mean, yeah, no. Has she dismembered Uh, any innocent people lately? (laughs) No, but I'm just saying, I think she is able to, in her own mind, be like, I'm not doing it. Yeah, this is not me. And she puts a big pillow over her head and just like closes her eyes. All right, Bobby, you're sitting there. Just how does this matter? You take three points of sanity damage, by the way. Oh, how does this manifest? Uh, You're just in the corner hearing, and you just, it's like it's amplified to you. You just keep hearing <laughs> the separation of flesh, the cracking of joints as they're broken oh, apart. <sighs> Bobby's, uh, Bobby sees the uh, pack of cigarettes that uh, uh, Murnau had offered before he grabs another one, lights it up, and is just sitting there smoking by the window, trying to block out the sounds. He can't. He, he's, he's flashing back to his mind and seeing the the the, the guys running after those guy, those two guys in the hallway, and he's wondering what the hell is going on. What the hell are we doing here? What is this building? City Hall. City Hall's got to have answers. There's got to have answers. There's a perfect explanation for this. There's a perfect explanation for this. Something in those in this building. Something. Something. Okay. What about Cumstone? He doesn't have to roll the sanity checks, but what does he do while all this is happening throughout the night? Um, I think he's sitting by the window. And uh, from time to time, he'll look over at uh, Makeshift, and he's worried about him having uh, seen where his mind's at when they were hanging out at the bar together. Then he looks over at the bathroom door, and he knows full well what Neil's doing and he's kind of maybe I don't want to say embarrassed but he feels like he should have he should have thought it all the way through on how to dispose of the body um and then he looks over at Maybelline getting her bed ready on the couch the couch that's blocking the door (laughs) (laughs) and he just what a terrible Lit. place to sleep, by the way. Yeah, right <laughs> there. Like You're on a barricade between the unknown and your apartment. <laughs> he just, uh, he's sitting by the window and he lingers looking at Maybelline for a second. Lights up. And he looks out the window. Wonders who else has killed someone tonight in the city that never sleeps. <laughs> Does anyone sleep? Not a drop. Bobby's shaking his head. No, not a drop. Yeah. I Roger's think shaking up, his head. Man. No. Neil's up all night. Off. Neil's up all night. This is a lot of work. Like, I don't think he has, would have time. I think, he wants to finish it before the sun comes up, too. I think Vicky nods off, like sleeping on a plane, an hour, and then she's up for two, and then she sleeps for 30 minutes, and then she's up for an hour. Roger nods off, and we see him... And kind of like dozy. And uh, he hears Neil. He hears the bathroom door open. And Neil doesn't walk out. Michelle walks out. She just comes stepping out of the bathroom. Looking around. And she walks over to the bookshelves. And runs her fingers along a row until she comes to the one she's looking for. She slides out a small red book and looks at it. She walks over to Roger and slowly turns it around and holds it up in front of you. And you see the yellow sign (laughs) on the front of the book. And she just says, Have you shown them? And you like wake up in a chair. 
I look at the door. Is it closed? It's closed. Look over it. <laughs> uh, makeshift. Look over at Maybelline. And then Roger just like brushes off ash. He fell asleep with a butt hanging out of his mouth. And he walks over to where uh, she she went to the shelf and he runs his fingers along looking for this book to see if it's there. You look along and there it is. A small red book. Smaller than all the others. Handheld. Small book in between two larger ones. Would have missed it if you weren't looking for it specifically. He reaches and pulls it out. Turns the cover over to look at it. And you see the same thing that you saw on that paper in the apartment. The yellow sign. He opens it. Looks and inside. inside. And inside on the front page it says, The King in Yellow. A play. <laughs> Did you guys see this? What the hell is this? He holds it up, and all of you see this symbol on the front of it. Everybody roll a sanity check <laughs> next week. You guys see this? He's trying to kill us. He's trying to actively kill us. Save his rolls. Don't do it now. Don't do it now. We'll do it next week. I, I'm, I have terrible rolls. So I'm not even doing it. I can't, I can't oh open God. this Pandora's box at 10 o'clock at night. We got to need some time. Uh, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Oh, my God. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>